If you've ever wondered how to install a Washlet Plus setup with a skirted design, today's your lucky day. Today we are going to walk through in detail installing a Toto Nexus Washlet Plus toilet with a S550E Washlet Plus bidet seat. Cord and hose are completely hidden and we have the skirted design. Subscribe to our channel if you're looking to see the videos on partially skirted and non-skirted Washlet Plus videos when we release them here in the near future. My name is Daniel Johnson. I'm your bidet expert and the owner of ManyBidets.com, where over the past eight years, we've sold over 10,000 bidets. So the first thing we need to do is we need to use the template to decide where we need to drill holes in the floor. For the Nexus, you can have either a 12 or 14 inch rough in. Both require different adapters. Some of the Washlet Plus toilets, like the Aquia 4, have a 10 inch rough in option as well. So here we see the 14 and the 12, but on some mounting templates, you'd also see a 10 on the opposite side of the 12 line. We're dealing with a 12 inch rough in. So I tore the perforated edge for the 12 inch circle. And now I'm going to take this template and place it over the flange. We're gonna line it up here so that it's as centered as we can have it here real quick. And now we're gonna grab a drill and drill holes here, here, and here. If it makes it easier for you, you can tape this down while you're drilling the holes. Since we're not actually installing this in a real bathroom, I'm just going to hold it in place. Here's our 12 inch rough and adapter. If we were dealing with a 14 inch or a 10 inch rough in, and the rough in is from the center of these bolt holes to the back wall without the trim taken into account. Uh, but if we were dealing with a 12 or 10 inch rough in, this piping would be longer or shorter accordingly. We are using a better than wax seal here. A lot of people will use an actual wax ring on this portion. Uh, we're using better than wax simply because it's less messy and we install a lot of toilets on this platform. These bolts along with the uh, additional hardware that I'm installing right now are hardware that should have come with your flange when you first installed it. So these are items that Toto does not include because they shouldn't be needed. That being said, if they did not come with your original flange or it was misplaced, these can be quickly and easily picked up for a few dollars at your local hardware store. So we're gonna tighten this down until it's snug. If you're using a wax ring, you'll definitely feel the wax kind of grip this flange adapter as you tighten it down. And now what we need to do is we need to screw through the holes that we've created here in the back to hold the back of the flange adapter down. These are short screws, they're the only short ones in the box, and they're actually taped to the back of the flange adapter. Uh, you might also put anchors into the floor which are in the same bag. We didn't in this scenario because we're drilling into wood. That flange adapter is now tight. Again, remember this is our 12 inch flange adapter. And so we're working with a 12 inch rough end. This should work just fine. We now have to install the brackets that the toilet screws into. And you'll see that whole process here in a minute. There are two different screws that we use for this process. One with a more normal head that goes through the top and one with a more open head that goes in through the side. The reason for that is there's actually a cover that goes into that open hole at the end of the screw. So we've got our drill holes already created. Let's go ahead and screw these in. You'll notice they also come with washers. So we're gonna use those washers as well. And now it's time to lift the toilet onto this uh, apparatus. The outside of the toilet porcelain is going to sit on the outside of these brackets. We're gonna screw, screw through the porcelain into the bracket. I should say through a, por a hole in the porcelain into these brackets. And then a pipe, a porcelain pipe, 
is going to fit right inside of this rubber ring. We can see that there is a gap here. That's because we do not have the, uh, the hole perfectly, the porcelain hole perfectly lined up with the rubber gasket. So we're going to shift this a little bit until we get that lined up. We'll kind of feel, I just felt it click. So you can kind of feel it snap into place. Uh, and I just felt that, so we're good there. Now we just need to have the toilet held in place. Now keep in mind that this toilet is heavy enough that it's not like these screws are actually necessarily holding it to the floor as much as those screws are keeping it from doing this. So it's holding it from a, a shifting standpoint, but it's got enough weight to really hold itself down for the most part. So here are those interesting looking screws with the huge heads. Now we are screwing through a hole in the porcelain. So we want to be very gentle here. We do not want to tighten it too tightly and crack the porcelain. And once we've got it snug-ish, we, we have these little clips that go on top and cover that hole. And that's why there's that big hole in the end of that of that head. We do the same thing on the far side. And now the toilet is firm. Now you'll notice on this lid, there's a little opening here. This is uh, something that will be utilized if you're using the auto flush kit. Uh, there will be a link in the video description to Toto's auto flush video for this unit. Uh, they do a very good job walking through how that auto flush kit gets installed. So uh, watch their video to learn how that piece of the puzzle works. So now we're going to install the seat on top of this Washlet Plus toilet. Now keep in mind that this is a Washlet Plus toilet specifically because it has this hole that allows the cord and the hose to be routed through the base of the toilet itself. So this hole is what makes it a Washlet Plus toilet. This should also be paired with a Washlet Plus seat, but there are Washlet Plus Toto seats that will work with this toilet across the board. So the S550E, S500E, C5, and C2 all work with this toilet. So all that you need to do is see one of those seats installed on this toilet and the others will be the same. So in our scenario, we are going to install the S550E on this toilet but the others would be installed the exact same way. We are going to start by installing these top mounting kits. So these sleeves go into the porcelain holes. Now, after many installation videos, we actually discovered a little trick to get these into the holes a little bit easier. So I just screw the thread of the screw into that mounting uh, sleeve a little bit. And then if you take a screwdriver and just push from the top, you can get that sleeve right where it needs to be. Uh, we found this is the easiest way to get these mounting sleeves where they need to be. So let's go ahead and do that for both sides here. There we go. And we're good there. We are now going to install this mounting bracket on the toilet. So let's go ahead and make it the same distance forward on both sides. Looks like we're five forward, five forward here. These can always be adjusted if needed. I'm gonna put the screws in and now we're gonna tighten them down. For the sake of ease, I'm going to still use the electric drill, but I'm gonna be very gentle with it because I don't want to strip anything. Now this rubber sleeve is being sucked up against the bottom side of this porcelain to hold that mounting system in place. So that's basically what we're doing when we're screwing in here. We are pulling the bottom of the sleeve up so that it grips the bottom side of this porcelain. And both sides are nice and tight now. Now that we have the mounting plate installed, we're going to install the bidet seat. So you'll notice that the cord and the hose are situated differently than you'd see on a normal bidet seat where they come out of the side. And this allows us to route these through the toilet. So we're just gonna stick these into the toilet here and do the same thing for the water supply hose. 
set this on top and then pull these guys through as I slide the seat into place. And now that toilet seat is in place. One of the common questions we get is, should there be a little bit of wiggle here? The answer is yes. The way that the mounting plate connects to the bidet seat, there is gonna be a little bit of wiggle here. So that doesn't mean you've gotten a faulty unit or there's something wrong with your unit. There's just gonna be a little bit of wiggle from left to right. You can see that it's pretty minimal. And when you're sitting straight down, you probably won't even notice. I know I don't, uh, but it is a question we get frequently when the installation is happening. Now comes the water portion. So we have to connect the toilet and the bidet seat to our water source. We can see that this T connector that comes with the Washlet Plus system has a rubber gasket on it. That end is going to connect to the bottom side of the toilet tank right here. So we'll go ahead and connect that. Now the offshoot is what's going to connect to the bidet seat. And we can connect that a couple of different ways. We can connect that outside like this, which is going to be easier because we have better access, but then the cord or the hose, I should say, is going to be sticking out. The other option is to spin this inward and then we can connect the hose here and it's going to be a little bit trickier to install, but it's going to look much sleeker. It's also important to note that there is an O-ring on the end of that piece that keeps the, uh, the seal tight. Last but not least, the water supply from the wall gets installed on the bottom. All of these connections are simply hand tight. Now we take the plug and we either plug it in over on this side or as in our case, since the plug is on the opposite side, we route it through and plug it in over here. So now we're set to go. This washlet and toilet are ready to be used. One question though we frequently get is when pairing this unit with an auto flushing system, customers will grab the remote and see that there's no flush buttons on the top of the remote and tell us, hey, you sent us the wrong seat. The remote doesn't have flush buttons on the top. Fortunately, this is rarely the case. And the reason for that is that this black panel on the top actually pops off and a new black panel with flush buttons gets installed on top of the remote that you already have. Now, in order to access that panel, you would need to open your auto flush kit. The auto flush kit has this unique symbol on it. Uh, and you're gonna see the auto flush or flush unit verbiage on the sides of the box. Uh, and then on each of the other two sides, that unique symbol as well as on the top of the box. So this is your auto flush kit, which not only includes the hardware necessary to connect your toilet seat to your toilet tank, but also includes the hardware to switch out the top of the remote. So just because you don't see those flush buttons on the top of your remote does not mean that you received the wrong bidet seat. It simply means you probably still need to open up this auto flush box and install that auto flush kit. If you're wondering how to install this, you'll wanna check out the video description as we'll have a link to Toto's auto flush tutorial, which walks through the entire process in great detail. So now that we have everything installed, it's time to make sure we don't have any leaks. We're gonna turn our water supply on here. This particular one, we're dealing with a quarter turn, but there are other styles. There's the pole, there's the multi-twist, but for ours, we just have a quarter turn. And we can hear the water entering the unit. While that's being done, I'm gonna feel my connections to make sure we have no leaks. And we are leak free, which is great. With metal connectors, uh, sometimes cold can be mistaken for moisture. With these plastic connectors, that's not so much the case. So it's pretty easy to tell with Toto's connecting system whether or not we have a leak. And thankfully in this case, we are leak free. If I did have a link, I want to turn the water off, 
drain the tank and then make sure that I checked all of the connections again, unscrew and rescrew to uh, maybe fix cross threading or whatever the case may be. So we've connected it to water, we've checked for leaks, no problems there. Now it's time to plug the unit in. We can hear a few sounds as the seat starts to boot up. And I walk in front of the seat, I see the lid open, I see the pre-misting kick on. We can also see lights here sharing uh, what's going on with the seat, the power light, the cleaning light, which happens when the pre-mist hits. Um, you can also see how to activate the seat sensor by pressing on the back of the unit here. Now when I do that, you can see some water draining into the back of the bowl. That's because the self-cleaning function is running over and through the nozzle while it's being stored in the back of the unit. This is normal, there's not any issues, it's actually a good thing, it means the self-cleaning function is working. A lot of other toilet brands, a lot of other bidet seat brands, I should say, on the market, have a seat sensor built into the seat itself, but Toto is a little bit unique in the respect that they put their seat sensor back here in the back. So now we've got the remote, we've put some batteries in the remote. I can try running a wash. I see that the remote lights up, but nothing happens. Pretty common question we get, why is my seat not working? Well, the simple answer is, your seat knows you're not seated on the unit, and so it's not gonna run because it doesn't want to spray the room with water. So, what can we do? Well, we can activate the seat sensor by putting weight on the back and then trying to wash. So I press the button on the remote, and we can see that the wash starts. If I let up, it'll take a moment, but it'll realize that I got up from using the restroom and it turns the wash off. So we've now tested to make sure that the unit is functional and we are ready to start enjoying our brand new Washlet Plus. So now you should be comfortable installing the Toto Washlet Plus system with this particular mounting setup from start to finish. Now let's say that there are some questions that you have that we didn't address. Don't hesitate to reach out to us if that's the case. You can call, email, or text us, or you can comment on this video so that we can address those concerns and questions. To get our contact information for email or phone call, visit our website, link is in the video description, or look for our contact information in the video description as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for a different Washlet Plus setup that you want installation help on, feel free to subscribe to this video as those are coming next. Thanks again and have a great day. Minibidays.com, where we sell mini bidets, not mini bidets.